Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Merlin's Monsters, a behind-the-scenes podcast of Murphy. Um, we are joined today by all four writers of Murphy. <laughs> hey, that's us. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> um, <laughs> what did we write for again? I don't think we made that clear. I don't clear. think we did either. Okay. Um, all right, so, so I am um, Alexandra Monroe. Uh, I am the creator writer and um i directed all the episodes of murphy um and on behalf of everybody i would like to say a big thank you for listening for sharing our um stuff for following us on instagram and all of our other socials um we appreciate you and we're we're just so happy to have you so um yeah uh, Annie. Hi, my name is Annie. I'm a co-producer and writer on Murphy. Um, yeah, I wrote episodes two, and then upcoming is going to be episode five. Gonna be fun. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna pass this off to Derek. Hi, that would be me. Uh, my name is Derek. I am a writer for the show. I also wrote episode three. There existed an addiction to blood. Um, I I couldn't even tell you what it was about. It's fine. We're going to pass it off to Drew. <laughs> Hello. Uh, this is Drew. Uh, I am also a writer. I wrote upcoming episode four and six. So this is going to be a very interesting episode because none of the writing questions are going to be for me. Uh, but I also voice the uh, one and only eccentric Elliot O'Donnell. Um and I'm also, yeah, that, that's that's what I do. You you do the Drew. I do the Drew. <laughs> the d- 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 <laughs> nope. <laughs> so so how this podcast essentially is going to work is that we're just going to discuss, um, at least in this episode, the first three episodes. Um, train. Oh, the the train. train. The infamous J train <laughs> screwing us once more. This podcast is sponsored by the MTA, <laughs> which is why it's taken so long to get to you. <laughs> I think I need We're to... not actually sponsored by the MTA. Um, alrighty, so um, I'll just do all that again. So how this podcast is going to work is basically we're just going to talk about um, three episodes at a time. Um, our process, what inspired us, um, and then of course if we gathered any questions from all of you, uh, the audience, the listeners, um, and any reactions that you've had. Um, we've had a, an overwhelmingly positive response to the show, which is like kind of wild. Um, Cause I know, I think for, for me at least, this is like the first time I've put out, um, I think for all of us, we put out something, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah. I believe so. I have not. I've, yeah. I've never written anything. Yeah, this is yeah Drew's first time writing um, stuff, so be gentle with him. Um, <laughs> or don't. Rip me apart into pieces. <laughs> Baby's first writing room. <laughs> Drew, Drew has uh, written two very excellent episodes, so I'm excited for you all to hear them, of course. Aww, um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's... Um, it's been a lot of fun uh, doing all of this because we've known each other for for quite some time. Um, Who are you? And I don't know anymore. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. So so yeah. Um, I guess we can uh, dive in, so to speak. Um, ah, that's funny. Um, episode one. Episode one, indeed. You wrote it. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Moving on, so, episode two. So, <laughs> so Alex wrote episode one, and um, she created Murphy, which is, like, kind of sick, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then um, with episode one, it has made a lot of changes, which is so cool. Um, mm. But, yeah, um, like, I remember, like, the original concept didn't even have, like, Sam Taylor in it, and then Elliot came in episode two. So that's so that was that was interesting. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the evolution of episode one was really cool um, to see. Of course, like from from all of our perspectives, I think like mine as well to show just like how differently I thought about everything um, and how much thought I ended up putting into it. Not that I wasn't, but you know, you know, you just you just start something and you're like, oh wait, it has to have a point, and uh, that's kind of. <laughs> How, how episode one sort of like evolved but yeah no sam sam wasn't a character elliot was barely a character um in the original original draft he wasn't 
and then he was yeah he was created for episode two and then we just liked him a lot um so there's there's way more elliot coming in the next half of the season more than you know um and and it's not just because i wrote two of the three episodes i pro- <laughs> i wrote them before i became <laughs> before i became That's elliot true. if i if i like go on a little slight tangent <laughs> not a huge tangent but i just remember first like with elliot himself literally i had this vivid image of this like when we first talked about it, i was like yeah like psychic that'd be cool not like a sidekick but someone who was like close to jack outside of murphy mm-hmm. and i had this image of this so unhinged character like the first scene that was written was of that scene if you listen to episode two where he like busts into the station and he's like hey jeanette <laughs> um when like jack comes back and um he tries to talk to um elliot to let him into the evidence room and um that whole bit between elliot and jack and i was like oh yeah Mm-hmm. This is this is the dude. That's that's a good guy. <laughs> this is the right stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and Elliot actually wasn't supposed to be Irish. Um, no, that's right. We, we did we did change that for other reasons, but um, you'll learn that you'll learn that eventually. I mean, there was there was like there were so many things that changed. Um, the whole ending of episode one changed, uh, and. Just that the first draft of it wasn't even complete. It was barely a draft, um, truthfully. And then once I I wrote the finished product and introduced Sam as kind of like as the villain, rather, um, which the response to him was very, very interesting because people loved him. (laughs) And it was it was a little surprising because I didn't necessarily find him unlikable or likable. I just kind of saw him as like a dude. And I guess I wrote him in like this quote-unquote wholesome manner um i hate him yeah and then he he ended up getting like a little skeevy so that was interesting i think that also is a credit to the actor who portrayed sam lucas yudman lucas Mm. yay the work that he put into that role is uh questionable but also (laughs) i mean it works for the character in a good way yeah no i mean that as an attribute (laughs) Uh, because this is a very shady, seedy man who uh, will do anything to uh, advance himself. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, he's a bit of a weirdo. He's a strange man. Um, so Lucas really nailed it with that interpretation, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Lucas is also one of our like longtime friends, too. So he he was like kind of not like in on the project from the beginning, but definitely some of the people we considered for um, just like actors in general. Um so yeah, it's it's cool. Shout out to you, Lucas. Shout out to Lucas. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I guess you know, doing like the research of like the siren and everything was was also really fun and really cool. I learned quite a bit of stuff that I didn't even know. Um, these three know this because um, I don't shut up about it, but I just think it's cool about how Alexander the Great's um, sister was uh, half sister, I think, was rumored to be a mermaid um, that she tried to like drown herself essentially but she turned into a mermaid instead um and i hate it when that happens (laughs) yeah and her name um i'm probably gonna say this wrong but it's thessaloniki and that's an actual like place in greece um so i think that's really cool and there's a statue of her in Thessaloniki. Yo, that's so yeah. cool. But I'm interested in hearing more about um, the type of research you had to do, Alex, for not just the episode, but for the the whole show. Because like you said, uh, you created the whole dang thing. <laughs> and this is kind of like an introduction into that world that you're, um, you've put together. So what was the research for, for both of those like? Um, oh, honestly, <laughs> uh, I watched... I think the the creation of Jack came specifically from me watching Broadchurch, which is, if I'm, I think it's an ITV show in mm-hmm. Britain. Um, it, it stars David Tennant and Olivia Coleman, and I absolutely love both of them, and they are just like incredible in the show. So I, I mean, watching that is like my first like you know british crime drama was just super cool and and it it was so different to me how i'm like oh okay like it's it's kind of like how things are in america with crime dramas but it's also different because they have different terms and different like 
rules and stuff um so i think like you know watching watching shows and understanding it from that way uh was really really cool and some of the research that i did and then um doing siren research because i have no interest in mermaids truthfully um <laughs> which is very funny but i i was like you know i'm gonna put that aside and just kind of like do the research and i learned so much um and it was also an excuse for me to use my uh, master's degree and write a song for <laughs> this. So I think, and like you know, the pow- like the influence of music in the first episode, I think is is really cool. Um, and if I do say so myself, um, but yeah, no, there, I mean, there was the the researching process was kind of fun. Uh, and I had to think about like, okay, so I know that things are like different in the UK and how does it translate to America? Like I wanted it to be authentic. Um, and I mean, we do have some UK listeners and they haven't yet, uh, given me any backlash. So, (laughs) so, I mean, you know, and it's like, yeah, you're right. You're, it's an introduction to the whole world. Um, and then I think like we get to see more of it, um, of course, as we go, because that's how shows work. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I came to all of you sort of asking, like, do you want to write on this thing? Do you want to be a part of it in some way, shape, or form as a writer, an actor, um, what have you? Um, so, and then I kind of gave out, like, basic ideas. I'm like, okay, I definitely want a werewolf and a vampire and um, some other fun stuff uh, that later that you'll see later on. So, and I think I just kind of assigned it. Um, so what was, um, what was like the first thing I guess that you did once you learned about like, um, you're going to write about a werewolf and kind of talk about like your process for episode two. So like, I don't want to go the, um, direction of like, what I know is werewolves, if that makes sense. Like, I kind of wanted to do a concept that I haven't seen done, um, at least before in my eyes, when it comes to werewolves. Like, you know, I've seen Twilight, <laughs> and I've seen things like Teen Wolf, and also just wrapped up playing, um, oh my god, what the heck is that game? Uh, the Quarry, which is actually a really cool rendition of the werewolf, to be honest. Um, check it out. But um, but so I kind of went and looked up kind of where did werewolves come from originally? Um, and so that's where I kind of came up with the idea of Peter um, in it was Pierre Borgo is a real person, supposedly, as the story goes. And um, him and I believe it was two or one other farmer. Um, don't quote me if I'm wrong. Uh, actually do but um so (laughs) they were actually um you know just sheep farmers and they were losing their livestock and they were losing a lot of money and things like that so there was a rumor they made a deal with the devil i mean it's a bit of a bloody story um i won't get into too much about it just because it's a lot but basically tldr um they all went on a bit of a murdering spree and it had to do with um people in their villages, um, children, wives, things like that. And so they were persecuted for it. And in the original story, they were killed. Um, And they were told that they sold their souls to the devil to transform into these things that are werewolves. And it was called the Werewolf Trials, um, which is really cool. So that's where I kind of came up with Peter, except for the fact, obviously, Peter is living in present day. (laughs) So he did not die back then. And for some reason, uh, he was he's 500 years old so um a little over that actually but um but yeah so that's kind of where i came up with peter and i like this idea that he's just like this trapped like um farmer like all he wanted to do was protect his sheep and quite literally at the end when he says he ate his lamb he ate his lamb um because he can't control it and you know Mm -hmm. just kind of that concept of like when humans are given something um that isn't of nature to them or something that can get them on a power trip or whatever is kind of what i was playing on a bit in the episode um Mm -hmm. so cirilla um kind of is contrast to peter um a bit in that aspect Mm -hmm. um where she literally just wants to help people and she's generally a good person and she was just it was a case of being at the wrong place 
um, at the wrong time. And it's it's kind of sad and just kind of getting into a bit of Jack um, and him letting go that little bit of what he has behind um, the force. So so, yeah, it was a lot of diving into all of that, those elements um, when it came to episode two. Um, I remember we talked about like, you know, Jack having a partner. Um, so this is where Elliot sort oh, yes. of comes in and everything. And but we we also uh, speaking of like partners, the character of Phyllis is a very interesting uh Person, another iconic Lucas Yudman performance, <laughs> I might say, and another one that makes me squirm. <laughs> let me just say, let me just say something about Phyllis. I didn't realize some of the things about Phyllis until people started saying it to me because I, I had this. It's so funny when you write, right? And you have this like image of a character in mind. But then you put that image out there, but that's the beauty of writing an art, right? Anyone can interpret it any way that they want to. And it's great. It's phenomenal. Like Phyllis, I imagine to be this kind of timid guy who really did look up to Peter um, and really, really wanted Obviously, it seems a little bit in the episode he wanted whatever the heck Peter was smothering his hair. I just picture it as that. And he also was somebody who was like, you know, has never been taken seriously. And all he ever wanted was to be taken seriously. Um, the reaction to Phyllis, though, was like <laughs> some things I wasn't expecting a little bit. Um, Lucas is just freaking great like when i first heard him do his phyllis voice i was like oh my god <laughs> he it, it feels very much like a renfield character to me like very much like the guy eating bugs in the corner while <laughs> P- peter is doing actual business that, that is oh spot my. on i think that's yeah <laughs> But daddy, when will it be my turn? When will it be my turn, daddy? You promised. And the thing is, Peter, I think, was like a little too gullible to some extent. Like, I think he let his guard down and weakened a little bit Mm -hmm. in the presence of Phyllis, um, which unfortunately leads, you know, to all the things that occur with him. So, Well, I think it's also interesting um, how, you know, Phyllis so badly, I think, wants to learn, like, Peter's secret and everything and... Um, we we talk about like things that are traditional to werewolves um, and something I didn't know was like the whole objects thing um, and objects actually mm-hmm. play a huge part in Murphy so mm-hmm. gotta talk about like the, the hair gel um, and talk about how you use that Oh the yeah, plot device. The different <laughs> yes the various plot devices in Murphy that are items which yeah that's something um, that we found like we found some commonalities with our research, like the cross, for example, um, was with werewolves too, funny enough. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously silver, of course, but um, but yeah, um, that kind of intertwined a little bit, I think, with episode three as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah. Yeah. Um, before we jump into episode three, I, I've been thinking the entire time since I've heard episode two about the action sequence towards the end. Yes. Where they all three of them confront Peter as he transforms into the werewolf. And number one, the incredible sound design uh, oh that went into that from Dennis, Dennis Mowers, who is so our awesome. who is our uh, shining, our guiding star in this yeah. uh, audio scape. But also in the way that it was um, like put together. Um, for listeners, um, that must have been really, really difficult to write. Do you have any insight into mm-hmm. how you put together an action sequence for an audio drama? Um, it was a process. I'm not going to lie. It was a process. <laughs> um, so a lot of our backgrounds, um, at least my background, I come from a lot of playwriting um, and screenwriting. Um, I have written like short stories and stuff like that. But uh, audio dramas are a completely different monster. Um, there, That fight scene has seen several renditions to be honest and necessary Mm -hmm. renditions because in one instance it sounds fine but then when you're going through the recording press like oh there was a point where like certain things weren't as obvious because everything has you need to know everything that's there Mm -hmm. um some objects have changed um yeah the plate which um oh my god which i had to work in so originally (laughs) the plate so we also, um, in research, hit some bumps with um, certain objects. Mm-hmm. So we had to give Elliot and um, um, Jack a new object that then what was previously written. And um, everyone wanted a plate. I wanted a baton. 
everyone wanted a plate. So you know what? We put the plate in and I think the plate kind of worked. Um, <laughs> in some weird way but yeah that was a difficult process um typically what i do is i actually sometimes act out the physical movements to get the physicality down and then that helps my process write a bit more um and just also yeah it's it's definitely a completely new monster and i think that's something all of us have had to kind of deal with. I know all of us have listened to podcasts and audio dramas before, but writing it is a completely different beast. Mm -hmm. You know, you learn as you go. I mean, this is kind of new to me too, um, but something that I think I've always wanted to do. So and I'm glad that I get to do it with you guys. Um, For sure. And and you're doing great. Like that's the whole thing is that like it is a learning process. And uh, even the recording sessions have been a learning process and things like that. Um, I do want to say one last thing about episode two, and it is a, a huge shout out to Pierre Borgo, Peter Borgo himself, Anton Correa. Mm -hmm. Anton. Uh, holy shit. Mm -hmm. He, when he first came into the studio and did his Peter voice, I, I think I, um, chills, <laughs> yeah. just chills. Um, I, I had an out of body experience. He, he did such a fabulous job with it. And like the, the way he delivered, um, I think my favorite line in the episode is, uh, you know, you're something, Jack, but tell me, um, if you're such a good detective, how did you never guess it was me? And I just, I think I remember falling to the floor. Something happened to me. I might have blacked out. I don't know. But I thought, <laughs> I, I just thought his delivery was so, so good. Um, so big shout out to Anton, oh, who's yeah. also our dialect coach. Hell um, yeah. Which I guess is a good segue into episode three, um, where we go to Romania. Yes. Episodes one and two are connected, but in like, not the same way in where, a linear you know, way yeah. whereas i feel like yeah. <laughs> with episode three we're trying now to connect it to the overarching oh, yeah. plot of the whole yeah. show um and that was very very important to me when i was trying to write the episode i know we had the outlines for all six of them at the point and we were still struggling as a writer's room to kind of blend them in to a cohesive story um so that took a lot of a lot of thought on my end into how to do that with my episode. I knew I wanted to be the one to be able to bridge everything um, mm -hmm. together. Um, and as you said, uh, with the dialect situation, um, Romania, entirely, it's not Britain, that's for sure. It is, <laughs> no. Um, it, it, it was very tricky. I know a lot of my research for the, for the show, uh, for that episode at least, was uh, not only locations and... Um, like folklore around that area to blend with um, the vampire part of the episode, but also like pronunciations, the language in general, um, just to make sure like I was getting everything right. The names of certain airports, um, it was all uh, like very valuable and necessary research that just took a lot. Um, but it worked, I think. I haven't gotten any complaints. And if I have, I can't read them because they're all in Romanian. So <laughs> for all I know, they're telling me I did a great job. I'm going to gas you up. So with episode three, too, like things are changing, of course. Like everything, mm -hmm. I think, changes the shift of the show and everything. But um, one thing I wanted to say was just like it is so like poetic mm -hmm. um, in its writing. And we really do see some beautiful moments there. And that's something special about us each kind of writing our own episodes is seeing our writing styles. And just honestly, episode three, like I've heard just how like amazing it sounds just in itself um, with Thank the you, dialogue and <laughs> yes, but also <laughs> all of that. Um, mm -hmm. all the writing, it's, it really, really came together wonderfully. Mm -hmm. so, well, thank you so, very yeah. much. That really means a lot. Yeah. I, it was, there was a, 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 about a month and a half long period where I just could not touch it for whatever reason. I had gotten about 20 pages in and then I hit a wall and I, I, I couldn't really tell what it was that was holding me back from finishing up the rest of it, but it was just a grueling like I had this English teacher in high school who insisted that writer's block was just not real that it just wasn't a real thing it was just a lazy writing uh get out of jail free card and that was something I also wrestled with while experiencing writer's block which um from experience feels very real to me um but um I, I can't remember how exactly I was able to crack it 
but I think it was an altercation between Marius and uh, and Murphy, the um, the one where she goes off on him on the cafe. I think mm -hmm. is what is what broke me out of it. Um, Marius was a was probably my favorite character to write in the mm -hmm. entire yeah. in the entire thing because he to me felt more like the main protagonist than Jonathan Roxburgh even did. Um, <laughs> antagonist because i feel like there's much more of a because the history is deeper with with him and murphy him being one of her first mentors and just jonathan of course is is a villain absolutely um vampire bad you know <laughs> but he at the very heart of it i feel like he is also a victim of his circumstance mm -hmm. um and is like very trying very hard to control whatever affliction this is yeah. And Marius just is not. He has a very old school, traditional way of looking at monsters. Um, whereas Murphy comes from this new school of of people who you know carry empathy and um, understanding. And um, the whole monologue I gave her about how she doesn't like calling them monsters, but calling them creatures instead, and like helping them. And they are just like us in in a lot of different ways. And it, it helped tie everything together and it helped cement Murphy's entire philosophy, I think. Something I love about both episodes two and three are the whole idea of like monsters hiding in plain sight. Mm -hmm. um, and something that I really, really loved about episode three is like the the whole idea of like how, what is a monster mm -hmm. and like who's the real monster? Like, um, you know, what makes a monster, things like that. And I think that's like a, a huge theme in Murphy altogether about like why, you know, we fear what we don't understand type of thing, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, is is Marius to a T. I don't think there are any monsters in that episode. I don't think you can really classify any one mm -hmm. person in that episode as a monster. Um, just different people dealing with the same thing in different ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the closest for sure is is Jonathan just because hello, vampire. <laughs> um, but then Marius, when he f goes off the deep end, I think, um, gets very, very close as well. And and to circle back to episode two real quick, I mean, like, Peter sort of being, like, having no choice and not being able to control what he feels, you know? Um, it's just kind of like he has to do what he has to do to survive. And so does Jonathan. And I think those, those are two things two very like important things i love about both of those episodes um absolutely and they're so enjoyable to listen to so <laughs> something that i really enjoyed for both episodes two and three is that you guys um both uh, uh like there's the traditional like way to like like object as as we talked about like you know to slay a vampire there's you know the stake to the heart there's you know there's the 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 cross there's garlic, garlic everything like that yeah <laughs> but uh it seems that the object that you used was uh the wild stalk of rose mm. and instead of like the for episode two instead of the traditional like got bit got cursed and can't control themselves you went with hair gel like like a cream that he could choose when to turn it, it was very very interesting very interesting to go the uh, off the beaten path as it were yeah i think subverting the 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 myth and the lore for me i can't speak for anyone else in this room but i know it was very important to me while i was writing it as well i took a lot of influence from this movie in the 70s directed by a man named bill duke called um uh, ganja and hess which is a vampire story um, and it, it's more about addiction than anything. Um, the vampires in that movie, they're not affected by sunlight. Um, but I think the only thing that can actually kill them is um, uh, standing in, in the shade of a, of a cross. I think that's what does it. Um, so, I mean, incorporating that into the, the episode as well, I take direct influence from that. Um, I think I had a bigger plan for um, in, roping addiction into the the story as mm -hmm. well, but I just didn't follow through with it because bad brain bad. Um, so we I just left it at that. 
Yeah. I think it's there, though. I do think it's present. I mean, the only reason certain things were happening was because he, there's no blood. Right. <laughs> and it's not less an addiction, more in the less of the way of survival for these characters, mm-hmm. especially also the siren as well. Mm-hmm. The monster, what, what I kind of love about Murphy is it really is about the monsters, but it isn't. It's mm-hmm. about what happens when people, I feel, don't understand things and they just fear things instead yeah. of trying to understand the unknown. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what happens also with the siren too, where people are scared and it happens in episode three and um, who knows in episode two, <laughs> rather. <laughs> I just, did, I for episode, I didn't even see the hair gel like coming. Like I, just using hair gel as a as a as a transformative like thing w- just blew my mind when I first read the script because it was like how I never read about that anywhere like that's nuts like where did you come up with that what was that research like I thought to myself I don't want him he's definitely not like a traditional traditional werewolf and kind of playing on that idea of his image the whole thing about peter is the one thing he has control of is his image and who he is um and how he looks um and i think also the hair gel has to play with some other themes that are going to be mentioned later on um in the season as well um kind of putting some puzzle pieces together a bit there um, that you will do <laughs> without getting into it too much. But that's where the representation of the hair gel came in was Peter as a character. Um, what would be that object that would make him who he is, um, if not the one thing he can control, <laughs> which is his hair? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, um, that just came in with the image of his character itself. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, Drew. Hey, that's, uh, that's me. You're that's you. my name. So I know you didn't, um, you know, f- write, write the the first two episodes, but I guess you could, because like how our process was, was that we uh, all sat together in a Zoom meeting and um, sort of talked about like different things that can happen. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess I could you talk about like that experience being in a writer's room kind of like for the first time. Yeah, Um, uh, it's kind of mind blowing, especially since uh, my background is um, it's it's mostly acting. Um, I I also write a few short stories here and there. Um, My main form of uh, (laughs) my main form of storytelling, though, is um, pretty much like the classic tell stories around a campfire sort of storytelling like no, nothing really written down more verbal things um which i mean is great but it's also like you know it, things change as time goes on it's like oh instead of this happening this happens but so it's it's been really really interesting especially going on a sort of um <clears throat> like where we wanted to go with the story um cuz you know it starts off with like with like, oh, here's here's kind of like the premise, the pilot, sort of like what the idea of the episode or, or the c- series is going to be. And then it moves on to episode two. Like, oh, here's an example of what the series is going to be. <laughs> then it moves on to episode three, which is like, I feel like it's a deviation from what like people would expect from like a crime solving show. Mm-hmm. Um and then there's, of course, later seasons or later episodes, which we can't talk about right now. Um, <laughs> so it was really, really interesting to like hear ideas. And I mean, ask any of these three of my fellow writers. I If I come up with an idea, I have to like spit it out. It can't be like held up. It can't be like, oh, hey, I'm going to write this down and save it for later. It's going to be like, nope. I'm spitting it out right now. Do what you will with it. The amount of uh, text messages I have from Drew at like midnight being like, hey, I thought of something. Can I oh. steal your ear for a oh, second? Oh, yeah, it happens. It mostly <laughs> happens when I'm out like uh, like I'm out running or something because my brain wanders while I run. And sometimes I come up with an idea and I'm, I have to stop and I'm like, Alex, I have to tell you something real quick before I forget. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, but no, it and you know, there, there have certainly been some horrible ideas, but you know, if you shake the sand a little bit, some diamonds come out as well. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you also come from a, a background of like 
RPGs and that's storytelling in its own. Um, and Drew is a DM and he is fantastic at it. I've played two games with oh, him. Uh, so, kind. I mean, yeah, I, I've, but you know, we, I, that's the other thing is that we all come from like this, like storytelling, even if you've never actually like written it. Um, in like a script form, it's still like storytelling. Like it, you said like still story. around the campfire type of thing, um, which is just so you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the more and more as time goes on, the more and more the line between myself and Elliot just keeps thinning and thinning. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. Just so you know for our process, so we have a studio and then we have some actors who live ways away, so they will submit from their own studio. But the people that come into the studio mainly are uh, Jack Murphy, Elliot, and then some other characters. So how is it? <laughs> being with um, <laughs> everyone else in the studio after also writing some of this fun stuff um it's incredible honestly like there 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 are some um there are some uh scenes that that you know that have happened in the first three episodes but you know certainly in later episodes too where it's like i requested you know schedule permitting um i i requested that you know, if if not all three of us, at least two of us be recording at the same time because it's different than recording separately and putting it together, as opposed to like recording in the same room. Mm. But like like, I remember there's there's one one scene that comes up later where I specifically requested that uh, Dan Dan Vasquez who plays Jack Sherwood, uh, and I, <laughs> he's very handsome. Um, uh, where I specifically requested that he and I are in that we record that scene together. And if we can't do it now, we'll do it at a later time because it was like very, very important to me between the chemistry between Jack and Elliot. It's also great to see, like you were saying, Annie, um, to see like characters that you have written, like other people bring to life. Like it's incredible. There, that, there's, that, there's, there's a character yeah, yeah, yeah. written in like one of the later episodes that I wrote, and I, I gave it to the actor. The actor took it in a completely different direction than I was expecting, and now that's who that character is. Now it's, it's great. Yeah, our casting process I think was one of the hardest things, um, and finding finding Murphy, finding an actor to play Murphy was very, very difficult. And Emma. God, every time she's here, <laughs> I just, I love her I so know. much. And she just really, talk about bringing people to life. She is, she brings Murphy to life so, so well. Um, I'm so she, happy that we ended yeah, up casting she, her. I fought she's very also, hard for mm -hmm. her, for sure. Oh, Same yeah. days. She is also such a delight. Um, she is very, very funny. She cracks me up every single time she's here. Um, and she, she's just she's just an all around great person. Um, so shout out to you, Emma. Hi, Emma. <laughs> yeah, Emma. <laughs> Emma Grace Myers. <laughs> um, and even though, like you know, we wrote these episodes individually, the ones that we say, everyone here had a hand in like every mm -hmm. single like plot in that episode, <laughs> like kind of bringing it to life. And I think that's also just such a such an interesting process. And since we all had a hand in it, we also all kind of had a hand in um, casting and things like that. Um, I know I worked with Alex before on casting for one oh, of my yeah. plays. Um, but um, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> that was also another like stay up until 4 a.m. Yeah, kind stay of up until 4 a.m. figuring out. And it also went down to like the main, the, the main, main lead as well, yeah. which is crazy. But it's just interesting when you have like such a like, I don't know, like a fantastical show. It's not quite fantasy. It's more sci-fi. But like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like you think of so many different things when you're thinking of the voices for these characters. Yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, one, one prime example in the first three episodes is uh, the voice of one Jonathan Roxburg. Oh, yeah. I don't think any of us were thinking that Addie Jenkins would bring forth the uh, Southern debonair uh, Absolutely uh, not. voice of Jonathan <laughs> Roxburg, and it was amazing. Yeah, when you were talking about Absolutely how not. your actor brought your character in an entirely different direction, I feel the exact same way about Jonathan Roxburg. Funny 100%. enough, it's the same actor. Yeah, it sure it, is. It, it, Addie Jenkins. And they 
they do such good work. They oh do God, amazing yeah. work. For sure. Truly a, an MVP. Mm -hmm. MVP. Hey, Addy. Hey, Addy. <laughs> Addy's another person who can just like walk into a room and crack me up. Yep. Like, I just, I absolutely love their sense of humor. Um, so, yeah, shout out to you, Addy. I mean, like, another thing is like, you know, I, 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 our entire voice cast um, has worked so hard and you know, the dialect, we had dialect sessions with Antone and um, <laughs> he's sort of, Annie does all our scheduling. So she's having uh, flashbacks right now, but um, oh yeah, you know, it, they, they've all come so far and they're all really, really dedicated and, and excited about the work too. Oh my God. They, I love every single one of them. <laughs> Like, and I'm sure, I mean, all of us do, of course, but it's just like so, because you know a project is really worth it, whether it's a it's a show or like whatever, um, when the whole team is just all like, yes, like mm -hmm. I'm a part of this, I'm proud to be a part of this. And it really, really shows with this. So, yeah. Who's you your favorite in this um, room who is also an God. actor? So anyway, um, <laughs> but actually, uh, so in terms of just like reactions uh, from our listeners in general, or like, you know, we've had some people ask us like questions about things and um, let's talk, let's talk reactions first. Uh, I've gotten, I mean, I talked about like the reaction to Sam and how people were just like, I was surprised that people loved him because I didn't expect it until, until of course, they didn't. Um, I, again, like, I just thought of him as some guy. And people found him really wholesome at first, and I was like, wow, that's kind of hilarious. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, yeah, people have been just, like, all... Uh, we, have, we have two friends of Dennis's who sometimes mm. send, like, voice messages of, like, live reactions. <laughs> Oh, I have oh not heard those. Yet. I haven't oh, heard those haven't, either. Uh, oh, I have yeah. some like yeah, messages. Gonna... I won't like say exactly what they are because oh, it's like yeah, that. Yeah. But um, from like episode two, like <laughs> it's just very interesting. Like what people react to versus what I thought yeah. they react to. Um, this was just basically the person. Um, also, just like I don't know, like kind of the same things you envision in your head. Um, for example, this person was talking about a moment in episode two, um, where like Jack is finally accepting the fact that Peter is a fucking werewolf. Um, and <laughs> Murphy um, and Jack are like, okay, we need to like go and do this. And Elliot is just sitting there, just <laughs> waiting <laughs> for someone to explain to him what is going on, but nobody does. No. Um, yup, same <laughs> shit as always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, this person also quoted um, that um, she a bad bitch for that, um, which is Murphy. <laughs> for, the, but, for the knuckles. For the, the knuckles. The china cabinet open. Which oh she my God. is. She is a she bad bitch. She is. I have another quote directly from, from that very same person um, <laughs> after they had just listened to my episode. This is a direct quote from them. <clears throat> I usually peep on the weekend after the episode drops when I'm in the studio and I kind of have the time to focus. And like I spent the final five to seven minutes of the episode fully focused with my brow furrowed as hell. You really had me so enthralled, fam. <laughs> Which was cool as hell. The most wholesome person. The wholesome stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see what else he, they said. They said, um, you're fucking based as hell for this writing in his chef's kiss. <laughs> um, also, I love smacking myself upside the head when I realized that Dracula mentioned early on was a foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, shit. That's right. It was. God yeah. damn it, Drew. <laughs> I know you only had one line in the episode. but Yeah, I had one line. That's because I didn't know what to do with Elliot. Right, and that's this, fine. It's fine. I, well, that's the thing is that it, oh, to talk about Elliot real fast is that we kind of didn't expect him to be what he is. And like we, you know, we involved him for episode two and we pretty much just like, OK, yeah, he'll be like there and then Little I don't whatever, know what happened you know? it was like he was gonna be here and there and then we got to um we, got to we could say four. we can we say location sure <laughs> we could say location we got to episode four so this the whole reason why Elliot is Irish is because I wanted the gang to go to Ireland and we were like oh man um actually Elliot's last name and he was British as well uh, was Parker and then I changed it to O'Donnell and then we you know we go to Ireland um 
for a very specific reason that we can learn about um as when it drops. The drops yeah but but then i don't know he just stuck because then you know they just kind of just continue traveling together and he gets in like really involved um so when he has that one line in episode three it's just because it's like he's not a part of it yet and we didn't expect him to be a part of it and like we all ended up just loving writing yeah. for elliot Go, oh my God, go yeah. going back to reactions about elliot's one line um <laughs> i have to shout out our incredible character artist uh paul kala oh yes. um who is sick uh who sick is a, a fantastic artist like no joke like he, he's he's doing all the portraits for our uh, case file fridays on our instagram which is at merlin's monsters um if you want to go check it out um but when we shared uh elliot's case file one of he he was one of the people that commented on it and he said uh that he was so mad that they left Elliot behind while they got out, got to go out and have fun. And he said, you should have just like an extra side episode where like it's just him and the plants, like release it on a Patreon or something. And we were like, <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Write that down, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um, but uh, yeah uh, shout out to you Paul uh, that's Paul underscore uh, Kala C-A-L-L-A on Instagram he's a fantastic artist give him a follow and I, I think Drew just mentioned this um, but you can catch Case File Fridays every Friday on our Instagram uh, and you ha we have so many more characters for you to meet um, that we get to actually see uh, <laughs> which is really cool. Well, we don't see them. Okay, Derek. We but... see it's an audio. We format. see things that we <laughs> see. <sighs> I listened to that thing with that thing, and then I listened. God, hearing. Wow, sexes. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> enough. <laughs> Andy had too much coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so it's kind of this one. This is actually uh, one question that. Um, I believe one of our cast members asked us uh, last week, and it was, uh, what was the most, oh, I'm going to, this is kind of what she said, like, what was the most, like, surprising moments for all of us? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. During the, during, like, yeah, the whole process. Then, yeah. And um, just in terms of the <gasps> writing or, like. Just, like, yeah, like, what surprised us the most? Like, what were the, the great, like, aha moments? Um, things like that. Uh, oh man! I mean, one oh, thing for me personally is that I was that not as right dog now. shit as di at dialogue as I thought I was gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard yeah. to remember everything because we wrote these like two years ago. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. Is awesome. And I've had COVID three times since then, so my brain <laughs> no. is is a little smaller than it used oh, to be. Oh wow, that's difficult. Like, because there's some things I would love to say. Mm -hmm. There are some things I would love to say, but I can't say because you haven't seen the things. Because uh, I guess like. I'll keep it to the first three. Like, what surprised me? What was exciting? What I liked? Um, mm -hmm. I guess, like, one of the best surprises for me maybe was, like, um, how things started to tie in, I guess. I think cracking that nut, definitely. Yeah, honest to God. Like, from episode two to three, there were some things that, you know, you could start seeing something forming in there. <laughs> <laughs> something for me I think some of the most surprising things for me I just talked about it was Elliot um, and how yeah. much I loved writing for him and just how 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 wonderful he is and all of that and how he he grow he is more than just like this goofy dude like there is like a softer more firm side to him that you'll see in later episodes but no it, it is hard to talk about like surprising moments when we can't Talk can't about say yeah them. exactly Things. all um, i can really say is that episode four is going to be a fucking killer yes <gasps> it's going to be an absolute banger <laughs> we're going to top the charts it's not in both not ireland right and egypt which is where we have fan <laughs> bases apparently wait. there's some that's surprising that's surprising too. <laughs> too. Yeah. Yeah. There are, uh, yeah. at least two people in egypt who are listening to this we, podcast we were, like, what, we were like number five like the number yeah. five uh apple podcast sci-fi for Egypt, chart for Egypt, Egypt. You know it was what? incredible. Yeah, that surprises me too because this is not a science fiction show. 
<laughs> but I mean, it's yeah, it's close sci- enough. It's like si- more sci-fi than fantasy. Like I know it's weird. The it's genre more is sci-fi, it's more sci-fi the, the channel than it is science fiction <laughs> the genre. And you likes know? to it- dance a little, you know, play the fiddle on the line. Um. <laughs> Annie, you say things Annie's sometimes, cut and cut off. it confuses me. <laughs> Annie needs to take in Tylenol and maybe a nap. I want you to know I also co-produce, so I do do some she, professional she things. She is very, very organized. That really is like Swear. having COVID three times <laughs> after a little God. while. <laughs> to me, that feels like uh, self-inflicted oh brain God. damage. Oh, my God. Let me tell you, working on a project where everyone works full time and it isn't like a project that's heavily funded, where people can be like, yes. please give us money. Please. <laughs> like literally, just five dollars would be super cool. And scheduling's a nightmare when it comes to people with full time jobs, but we made it work, and yeah. that's what matters. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, I don't have anything to say about that. Um, well, I'll, I'll bring it back and just say thank you for your, your episode four praise because that felt very nice. Aww, <laughs> you're welcome. Well, hold on. I haven't heard the episode yet. Yeah, that's I'm true. I'm saving judgment until then. I appreciate it, Derek. I've read a script. <laughs> yeah, we've read the script. Ugh, oh, oh, we've read the yeah, script. That I was garbage. Have I heard the script? <laughs> I haven't no. heard something. I will on February 1st when it drops on all streaming platforms. Oh, yeah. shit. Excellent. Excellent segue. Yeah, as a birthday wow. present, please listen to Murphy. Yes, yeah, that's exactly. Alex's um, birthday. Jinx, you want me to <laughs> I knew um, you would say it. <laughs> I will say on the on the topic of of like money and fundraising, we will be releasing a Patreon um, at some point this year to sort of keep that going. Um, because I mean, there's there's a lot of things that we that we wish to do, and I think Patreon is like a good platform to do that on. Um, yeah, I mean, we we want to raise money not for ourselves, of course, because we're probably not going to see any of the money. No, but for our team members and everybody who puts their hard work into it, um, and you know, updating equipment and things like that. Um, because like, yeah, you were independent and everything, but even independent projects and small, no matter how big or small, cost money. And this is a pretty big project yeah um, biggest project any of us yeah. have worked on i think the musicians by the, the oh my god did yeah. we have actually like <laughs> dennis like gets people to record yeah. some of the um parts in it as well so it is like you know we really we have a bigger community than i think mm-hmm. um working on the project at times because you know the four of us we only ever see you know our scripts and our actors and um, people on the production team, we never really see the musicians. That's all Dennis, and they're phenomenal, and they work hard as well uh, doing some of the sh- 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 stuff um, on, the, <laughs> on the... Good sh- save. <laughs> um, some of the stuff on the show, so... Dennis so, yeah. really said, I will be goddamned if I do not use this, uh, this master's degree I just spent a lot of money on to make <laughs> yes. this happen. And for that, we thank him and Brooklyn College for giving it to him. And yeah. Brooklyn. And Brooklyn, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dennis is pretty cool, I guess. Um, They're getting married in Yeah, they months, are. For reference. Congratulations, kids. Aww, Very thanks. excited. It'll can't wait fun. to cause chaos oh, at your wedding. You. <laughs> yeah, no, I Dennis. can't wait to object uh, at the wedding. No. No, you're going to stop the There's wedding. There's no opportunity to. I can't wait to object to the non-objection to the wedding. I'm going to throw <laughs> my flowers at you. Please, oh I will catch them, and then I'll be the one getting married next. Who is it going to be, to Dan? Yes. <laughs> Dan, if you're listening to this, this is my official marriage proposal. Hi. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, no, to... <laughs> To talk talk a little bit about Dennis, I mean, he has really worked so, so hard on this. He's been staying up uh, super duper late to to work on this um, just to make sure that it sounds good because he he really another thing we get praised on is um, our production quality. Uh, People come up to me and they're like, it sounds amazing. Yeah, my I have a. family member who is in the voiceover biz and he came he said that like our production quality was on par with like the best mm-hmm. audio dramas yeah because dennis listen dennis doesn't fuck around <laughs> you don't he mess said, yeah he he really uh wanted it to so that's why he's like fighting so hard to get like live musicians and things like that and um why we have why we try so hard to get as many 
actors in the studio as possible. Of course, like that's not realistic to have all of our actors because some of them live in like Connecticut and Maine. And at one point, Angie lived in uh, like Minnesota, Minnesota. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so she was recording from there. You know, what are some other just like last thoughts that we all have about um, the process and just the characters and our lovely, lovely cast and what to expect? Um, Honestly, um, with all the work that's put into it, I'm glad that people are enjoying it and like people are listening to it. I think that's always so scary when you work on something for such a long time and you're like, how is the reception going to be? Um, so <laughs> really awesome to see that people are excited for the world of Murphy um, as we kind of are too um, to bring it to you. So yeah. Derek, what were some things that any last minute thoughts you have? Truly, I'm just thrilled with how it's been received so far um i've never really heard something i've been a part of um i've never been able to to point at something and say i did this you know to anybody outside of college um so this just feels very very gratifying to me as an artist um i never really pictured myself as as much of a writer up until very recently so um this feels like a very great opportunity for everybody in this room i think but um for me definitely um to to explore that um thank you very much for the opportunity to do this i'm very excited to keep going um, i'm very excited to hear the next batch of episodes thank you for listening too if you've been listening and following along with the podcast and mm-hmm. if you donated to our uh, indiegogo if you're uh, preemptively going to donate to the Patreon. You know, thank you. Uh, your support really, really helps us, and it means a lot, just in general. Um, yeah, uh, going off what they said, uh, thank you everyone to, who has listened, who has, um, you know, has has shared uh, our show, has shared Murphy, has given us, you know, five stars, who've given us a rating, review, anything like that, sub- subscribing. Um, we are very, very, very grateful. Um, and uh, similarly, I'm also very excited for you guys to hear the latter half of the season, which I just realized I'm responsible for two thirds of. <laughs> oh God, um, <clears throat> no pressure. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening. I This has been a tremendous ride, a tremendous experience, and I can't wait to do more of it I'm very very excited and so is Elliot Elliot can't wait to, to show you what's what's coming next I guess my last minute thoughts are kind of just to echo everyone uh, thank you all so much uh, we are incredibly grateful for your support um, and yeah I mean it's, it's just like you know I, I kind of wrote this and wanted to do this for my friends um, because I just love them and I think they're great and uh, it, it's hard when you're an artist and you're out in the world after doing, if you went to school for, you know, acting, writing, directing, whatever, and kind of just like drifting. And you're like, what am I going to do now? And trying to find the opportunities. And after a while, I just kind of got sick of like looking for them and kind of created it um, for myself and, and for everybody to give us a little jump start, you know? Because uh, it is hard. And I think, like, keep trying. <laughs> um, so, yeah. You can listen to episode four dropping on February 1st, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, Merlin's Monsters will come back with a second episode um, where we're going to interview some cast members and uh, talk about their experience working with us as well. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of gearing up for that. When you ask, don't worry about don't it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and of course, like follow us on Instagram and Twitter um, at Merlin's Monsters. That's Merlin with a Y. Um, but I guess that's it from us. So, oh, shout out again to uh, we also have big fans in the coffee community. Oh my God, uh, yes, Merlin M- Merlin's Munchies Coffee uh, has been a very vocal supporter of us since uh, you met them at Comic Con. Oh yeah. yeah, that's right. And their coffee's 
fucking good. Honestly, it's, it's like the best coffee I've it's ever really had. Good it's, coffee. it's really good. <laughs> and we're not being paid to say this. No, we, but if we, you did want us to pay us to say it, <laughs> we'd be they happy to. Have, they don't have to. They don't have to <laughs> because like it's really good. It's anyway, so I'll good. take five dollars. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars is five dollars, you know. Oh my god! Oh my god! Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night all. Good night.